Hello and welcome back to the second section of our Moodle course on writing SLOs in special education. Um, in this section we're going to really concentrate on data. Um, a lot of this will probably be, re be review for most of us, but we thought it was important that everybody be on the same page and that we all have a basic understanding of the different types of data and how they can inform our instruction and also help us uh, establish and monitor those SLOs as we implement that process in the coming school year. So some basic background, why do we as teachers collect data? Well, of course we collect data because it helps us inform our instruction, helps decide what we're going to teach, it helps us choose programs and materials to, to teach what it is we decide that we're going to teach, um, and, and the, most importantly for us in special ed, it helps us determine whether our interventions or our teaching is effective in helping students to learn. Um, and then it also provides us with an avenue to modify that academic programming um, if we need to make changes to help a child learn. So the steps to data collection, again something very familiar to us, we clearly define a selective skill or skills and behavior that we want to concentrate on. Um, we systematically collect data in a regular way about that skill or behavior and then we analyze it uh, one of the best ways to analyze it, of course, is to create a graph and um, look at that graph and study that to determine how effective we're being and make our decisions about whether we should just continue on or what changes we might have to make in our instruction to improve student learning. So there are three types of data. Um, again, a lot of this might be review, but one is the interim kind of assessment or a benchmark assessment. Um, and these are periodic, usually two to three times a year correct and they um, provide us with m a monitor of progress they are guideposts fence posts along the way um, that give us some information as to whether or not we are being effective or not uh, here are um, some of the things that may or may not be available to you in this district to um, to use as benchmark assessments um, and this information along with this entire um, PowerPoint presentation is available for you in this section of the course so that you can refer back to this and look at this in more detail. But we can see the familiar measures that we have used or continue have used or um, we, we continue to use to assess um, student progress in an interim sort of way. The second kind of data is formative assessment and that is of course the kind of data we take every day. How are they doing? Those quick evaluations, immediate feedback that help us inform our, our instruction, help us decide whether we're on the right track, what, we, what changes we need to make. Um, some examples of different kinds of formative assessments are here. Uh, one of the key ones that's probably important for us in special education is teacher-created uses of different types of data that we can collect. Um, different tests or different kinds of measures. Um, these are the things that we probably use regularly, but if we collect them systematically, they can be format they can be formative data that will help us determine whether our SLOs are being effective as we go through the school year. Again, the information is here. It will be available to you to go back and study it. Um, some of the things, um, of this information comes off of some uh, material from the Department of Public Instruction and so some of the things they say could be used um, for formative assessment um, may not be something that use, is used on a regular basis but they're just saying these are things that are out there that are possibilities um, and the same is true um, for some of the other types of data that were in the previous chart and in the one chart that's going to be to come so um, I guess you have to take it for the grain of salt and understand that there, there are some things that might be better or more efficient for you as a teacher than others in using um, for formative assessment. And I've got a few things here about formative assessment that I want to say in addition to that, um, especially as it relates to special education. Um, there's some more specific examples of the kinds of data that we take um, and we can take and we can use to document um, interim progress, or, or not interim progress, but formative progress on our SLOs, and those are teacher-created tests and exams. 
teacher created curriculum based measures teacher created CBMs um, there are some websites for some of that uh, we probably do more of this these latter few on here than any other teachers in the school um, in the schools that we work in uh, frequency counts numbers of times a skill or a behavior occurs uh, duration recordings how long does a student engage in a behavior and latency recordings how long does it take for the t for the behavior that we're looking for to begin or um, so those are some different uh, other kinds of formative assessments uh, that some of you um, who teach students with uh, differing needs might need to be looking at to monitor your progress on your SLOs in the coming school years. The third kind of data is summative assessment. And these are those large scale standardized assessments that evaluate cumulative student learning. Uh, the most frequently rem um, cited example of that would be our WKCE, um, the Smarter Balance that is to come will also be a measure like that. These are the things for those folks in high school, the ACT, the SAT, um, honors exams, those AP exams, um, those kinds of measures um, are also summative assessments that you could use to, in, to evaluate how your students are doing on their student learning outcome. Um, I like this graphic. It kind of shows how all three types of data can be used to, in combination. Um, the DPI is not requiring that. Um, they are recommending it, of course. Um, and in some instances, it just might not be appropriate. Sometimes that summative assessment just does not, is not relevant, um, or those benchmark assessments um, don't fit with what it is that we're after. Um, so the kinds of assessment that you use are really it's really left to you um, but this graphic is kind of nice because it shows how the B's the benchmark assessments three times a year uh, the little F's and the funny little purple shapes along the way show how things are going as you progress through the school year and how that summative measure um, attaining a final endpoint might be um, within reach um, so it's a nice way of looking at uh, all three of those types of data together and how they can be can be used together to measure progress on an SLO. So let's go over a few quick things that relate to using data that are kind of important and some good reminders. Uh, the key part of this in writing your SLO or choosing your SLO for the coming year is um, does the data really measure growth in student learning that you're really targeting? Um, and does the evidence sources and formative assessments really represent steps towards the target skill? Um, and then also, are you being consistent in your data collection? Are you sticking to the definition of the target skill or behavior? Are you strictly adhering to a criteria that you have set out at the, at the beginning? So consistency is, is the key. Um, finally, um, there's some just some little statistical things to kind of think of. Beware of the fact that many of your classes or groups are very small and that one student may constitute 10 to 15 percent of your entire caseload or 10 to, the, 10 to 15 or 20 or maybe even 25 percent, uh, 25, possibly 25 percent of the students who you're addressing, um, whose learning needs you're addressing in your SLO. So be careful of those percentage figures and percentage of growth that you anticipate or the increase in the number percentage of students that are going to um, attain something. Because of the smaller numbers we work with, we need to be careful and, and cognizant and aware of, of using percentages in that way. Um, another thing is beware of um, using, if you're going to use a, uh, a summative measure like being in a proficient range on the WKCE, be careful because remember, if you're hoping to increase your students to 50% of them in the proficient range, some of them, you know, if you're really uh, exemplary, might be moving out of proficient and into advanced, um, especially if it's more skill specific or in, in an area. So um, make sure that you're uh, aware of the fact that different using different quartiles, the 
minimal, basic, proficient, advanced, and moving students from one to the other, that when you move from one to the other, some other students might be moving in a different direction. So be careful of using that as well as a measure in informing your SLO. So there's another um, uh, PowerPoint show that goes along with this section that has some questions or some data that you can use to answer the questions in the quiz. So recommend that you open up that data or that the data for the questions and then answer the quiz questions that follow this PowerPoint in this section of the course. And again, thank you very much.